everyone. Welcome back to week two of our fall broadcast for 2021. We are your host, Ranger Alley and Ranger Madison. Don't forget that every Thursday at 2 p.m. you can catch us here on Facebook and YouTube, and they're going to be on our website. If you already missed watching week one, go back and rewatch it. We hosted with Wendy Cass, who is our park botanist. It was a great way to kick off the fall season. Mm -hmm. Every week for our fall broadcast, we will be doing a peak check. We will be showing pictures of our fall colors, tips for visiting, and we will have our special guest. Yeah. This week, we talked to Ranger Jonathan about the fall equinox. Yeah, guys, happy fall. <laughs> it's a great way to kick it off. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do our peak check. Not too much <laughs> different compared to last week. However, the temperature is much mm -hmm. different. You'll notice that we are wearing jackets. We did not have these on last week when it was a lot warmer, a lot sunnier. Earlier this week, our park rangers did go out and get some photos and it was pretty foggy and rainy, but it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. We are seeing still those peeps of color. So we're seeing a lot of reds from the red maple and the sumac. Uh, Virginia creeper, those are the ones that you can see slithering their way up the trunks and along rock walls and it's so beautiful, especially mm -hmm. when it's dark and damp out, those colors pop like crazy. It is so cool to take pictures of those. Something else that we need to celebrate is not only are the leaves changing color, but we do have some plants that are just blooming that mm -hmm. add to that fall color. So that would be like the mountain ash, which are those red berries and goldenrod, which are just a beautiful, beautiful yellow that I love to see. We did talk to Wendy last week about how this fall is going to be a little bit different compared to last year in 2020. We did have a wet summer and then it was a dry fall, whereas this year we were experienced a more dry summer and now we're having a wet fall. So she said that that's actually really good for our fall color this year. <laughs> so we're excited about that. One of the biggest tips that I can give you this fall season is to use the website. There's a lot of really great information there and it can probably answer a lot of the questions that you have before you come and see us. My other tip for you is to download the NPS app and download the offline content for Shenandoah. This will give you a map while your phone is still mm -hmm. alive and it'll give you hiking <laughs> places and points of interest and all around just a really great tool to have for you in the park while you're here. But make sure you download that offline content because you're likely not gonna have service up here in the mountains. Remember, keyword, while your phone is still alive. <laughs> Do not rely on your phone, mm -hmm. um, but it is still a great source. Uh, we also recommend using the Southern Entrance Station. So those would be the Swift Run Gap entrance station and the rockfish gap entrance stations and arrive early another great online tool is the digital path you can go to recreation.gov and then search for shenandoah national park and you'll see a list of four different passes that you can get there are a couple seven day passes and the shenandoah annual pass and if you screenshot those or you can print them out bring them with you to those entrance stations and show them to a ranger and they'll let you on it We'll be posting our campground statuses on our social media this fall season, and it's an important thing to note that our weekends are already fully booked for campgrounds, so there are no more reservations for our weekends through the closing of campsites. But if you still want to come and camp in Shenandoah, there are first come, first serve sites available. So that means you get here early and you can claim one of those unclaimed sites. So I recommend really getting here Thursday, maybe Friday at the latest so that you have a chance to still camp in Shenandoah. A good tip in the fall for a hiking season is to wear layers mm -hmm. and to start your hike early because in the fall our days are a little bit shorter and if you know anything about Virginia, we can experience all four seasons in one day. So you can wake up and it's going to be really cold and then by the afternoon you're probably going to be stripping down to just that first layer because it's really hot like it, we were back in summer and then by the evening it's going to be cold again. Don't forget your water and some snacks. Snacks are so important when I go hiking. Mm -hmm. Also, if you start earlier on your hike, you're going to avoid some crowds and that will heighten your chance to see some wildlife. And so you can bring your camera. Remember to use the zoom because we want to respect our wildlife and keep that distance. Something new that we're doing this season is we are asking for pictures from you guys to show on our fall broadcast. So we've made a Flickr group. So go to flickr.com groups 
slash Shenfall and upload your photos from this year. It's a big park and we can't cover every single inch, so we'd like to see more of what you guys are seeing this year. We want to see fall through your guys' lens. Make sure that they are from fall of 2021. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and make sure they are pictures of the fall colors. Yeah. Your family is cute, your dog is amazing, but we're really looking for fall colors for this group. So go and check it out, flickr.com. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to toss it over to a talk that Ranger Madison and Ranger Jonathan had earlier this week about the fall equinox. So let's go check it out. Or as we're, ooh, ooh, there was a bug. Ah! All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Ranger Jonathan, one of our education rangers at Shenandoah, who is super knowledgeable about the night sky. So Jonathan, can you tell us what the fall equinox is? The fall equinox is that time period uh, where we're halfway in our transition between summer and winter. But it's not just a halfway point. It actually has some really interesting features to it. So, for example, when we think about our planet and we know that it rotates every day, 24 hours in a rotation, and that's what causes our day and night cycles. But what really causes the seasons is that we are canted. We're actually canted a, a little bit beyond 20 degrees. So in our rotation around the sun in a year, there's points at where that angled cant is further away depending on where you are. So for winter, the southern hemisphere, the southern pole, is pointed closer to the sun, while in summer, the north pole is more closely pointed towards the sun. So that's why in the polar time periods at the summer and winter solstices, one is all day and the other is all night. The equinoxes though, the spring and the fall equinox is that mid-transition point. At the equator, it's going to be roughly about a 50-50 day, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime and actually where the name of equinox comes from. From Latin, the first part, equi, means equal, and nox is night, so equal night. And so it's that time period where the day period and the night period are roughly, comparatively, equal. Now, depending on where you are, that can be very different because towards the polar time periods, the polar parts of our planet, it'll be a little longer or a little shorter. It's going to be September 21st this year, if I remember correctly. We will be having an equal part of day and night. It's the time period where we transition towards less day and more night as we go into winter. And away from more day, less night of summer. What other celestial events or events in the sky can we be expecting this fall? Well, throughout every day and throughout the whole year, there are a lot of events that are going on. I mean, no matter what, we are transitioning around the sun every year, and that pulls us through different paths of other objects, whether that be from an eclipse of either the moon with the sun or moving through the paths of comets that have been here over hundreds of years ago in some cases. But this year, we don't really have too much that will be visible. We will be coming through a couple comet trails that will cause some annual meteor showers that we have, but most of the big meteor showers for this year have either already come through or will be whited out by the moon. But the two that we have left that should at least give us a little bit of a show would be the Draconid meteor shower on October 8th. And then in December, we have another meteor shower, which is the Geminid meteor shower, which should be one of the bigger ones of the year. But there is going to be a moon early in that night, so you'll want to wake up really early in the morning if you want to be able to see any of that. Do you have any uh, tips for viewing these events or for stargazing in Shenandoah in general? So if you want to do any stargazing or look at any of the night sky objects, some of the big key tips I'd recommend is get as far into a dark area as you can. So what I mean by that is if you come up to where we are right now by Pass Mountain, we're overlooking the Shenandoah Valley and we're fairly close to Luray. And some of the light that comes off of those local areas can affect the amount that you can see. And especially for like meteor showers, especially if it's a fainter show that year where they're not as large of objects that are causing that flare up, it might be a hard to get to see them in those lit areas. So I'd recommend around big meadows. It's one of the darkest points and it's the furthest from lit areas in the park. The other big key tip I'd have is make sure you plan at least an hour to an hour and a half. Because you want to spend at least a half hour letting your eyes adjust to the dark. 
so that way you are best attuned to be able to see those dark objects. How can we expect the fall equinox this equal day and night to affect us in Shenandoah? Really, it won't have too much impact because we're transitioning between summer and winter and that fall equinox is the signaler of that change to occur. And so we will expect that to be the good start of the fall season for us. So our temperatures will be much cooler than they were during the summer. We'll also start to see those changes in the forest around us. So the fall equinox is really just another good landmark to transition us into fall with our leaves. Yep. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us this week and telling us about the fall equinox. And thank you too so much for tuning in. Next week we'll have Beth Prince from Matthews Arm Campground. You won't want to miss it. We will be a good... I. We got it, we got it. <laughs>